If you have never owned an Apple Watch, or if you're just in the research phase and are trying to figure out whether or not it's a good fit for you, then be sure to stay tuned. Here in my hands is a brand new Series 7 Apple Watch. In this tutorial, I'm gonna crack this thing out of the box, walk you through the entire setup process, and review all of the most important features and settings. I'll also show you a few of my favorite accessories, which you will be happy to learn do not cost an arm and a leg. My Apple Watch tutorial, coming up next on Tech Talk America. I wanted to make this tutorial for a few different reasons. For one, I know the Apple Watch can save your life in an emergency. There's just one problem. The people who stand to benefit the most from this technology are mostly older adults who are not always tech savvy. One of these individuals is my father. Dad, as we all know, this has been a really challenging year. So just as soon as I'm done making this tutorial, you're getting this Apple Watch. Happy Father's Day. Without any further ado, let's unbox this puppy. As you can see here, the packaging is fairly minimalistic. Let's flip it over, pull on these two tabs to open it, and it's beautiful how it opens, just like a piece of origami. And here we have the actual watch itself. And if I remove this box, you'll see this comes with the Midnight Sport Band. The watch itself is in this box, and if I open it up, here we've got a little paper cover, so we just need to remove that, and there it is. Also, of course, included in this box is the charging cable, and starting with the Series 7, this now comes with a USB Type-C connection, whereas in the past it's always been a USB Type-A connection. Before we get into the setup process, I want to take two minutes to show you a few of my favorite accessories. You'll find links to all of these products down below in the video description. One item that you'll notice is not on this list is a screen protector. Save your money, people. They're all junk. They either peel off in two seconds, bubble up worse than a case of monkeypox, or decrease the sensitivity of the screen. What I do recommend that you buy is a bumper. This one, link in the video description, is under $8. I like this product compared to some of the competitors because it's all one piece, simple to take on and off, and it's not so chunky that it gets in the way of using the digital crown. Another thing that you might consider buying at time of purchase is Apple Care. That way, if you ever do accidentally damage your watch, you have an easy solution to get it repaired. And yes, I bought it for this one. Let's talk about watch bands. This one, made by Apple, is $49. This bag of 12 is $27. Nuff said. The last accessory I want to show you is my favorite charger. This is a three-in-one charger, so you can charge your watch, iPhone, and AirPods all at the same time. That being said, there is one thing that I don't love about this charger, but it's easily remedied. Thanks to some recent software updates, your iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods all use this thing called battery optimization. It's great in that it helps preserve the life of the batteries in your devices, but the bad news is that means those LEDs on the front are going to be constantly going back and forth between a solid green light and a blinking light. I bring this up because if you're one of those people who charges your devices in your bedroom at night, that blinking is not great for your sleep. So here's what I did. Just get some black nail polish and paint over these three LEDs at the bottom. Problem solved. The only other downside to this charger is it will not charge as fast as the USB Type-C cable included in the box. So just know that if you don't have a lot of time to charge your watch, use that included cable. Let's now go through the setup process. Step one, bring your iPhone next to your Apple Watch and it should automatically detect it. The first question it will ask you is, are you setting this up for yourself or for someone else like a family member? For this demonstration, I'm gonna set it up for myself. It will now display this orb-like image, which is essentially a QR code on steroids. All I need to do to pair the two is point my iPhone's camera at that code, and now the two are linked. I can set this up as a new watch or restore it from a backup. Let's set this up as a new device. I can now tell it which wrist I'm gonna be using. In my case, I wear my watch on my left. Terms and conditions. I'll talk about this as much as you will reading it. Next. We can now set the default font size and optional bold text. Now it's time to set a passcode. There is an option to disable the passcode feature, but since you can use your Apple Watch to access text messages and emails, it's probably a good idea to add one for security reasons. 
My advice is that you make it match the code that you use to unlock your iPhone. Keep your watch updated automatically. Uh, yes, please. I can now choose whether or not I want to use Apple Pay on my watch. I'm going to skip this for now. It's now going to give you some information about the emergency SOS feature as well as fall detection. Let's tap continue for now. We'll come back to that later. Always on display is a feature that I personally turn off to save battery life, but you can always change that later on in display settings. Some of the apps on your iPhone probably have a watchOS version available. This screen is simply asking if you want those apps to be installed automatically. My advice is to do this process manually. So let's tap choose later. There are two ways that you can view all of your apps. You can use grid view, which resembles a spider web, or you can use list view. Personally, I prefer list view. Let's now talk about the two buttons on the side and some of their different functions. This is the digital crown. You can use it to scroll by rotating it and it also clicks inward. On the side of this button is a sensor that is used when taking an ECG. If you're in an app and want to return to the watch face, just click the digital crown once. Double clicking the crown will take you back to the last app you used. If you press and hold the digital crown, that is one of the ways to access Siri, the automated assistant. You can use Siri for everything from sending text messages, checking the weather, sports updates, and so much more. Below the digital crown is the side button. If your watch is off, pressing and holding that button will turn it on. If you click it once, that will bring you to something referred to as the dock. The dock is basically a shortcut to whatever apps you designate or it can also display recently used apps. Double clicking the side button is how you access Apple Pay. If I press and hold on the side button for two seconds, that will reveal the option to turn it off, display medical ID information, and it also gives me a way to call for help. If I press and hold the side button beyond two seconds, you will see and hear a timer countdown and an alarm will start to go off, indicating that if I keep holding it down, it will place a call to emergency services. Think about this for a second. If you're in a car accident, there's a pretty good chance that your phone may not be where you left it, but the Apple Watch is attached to you. That's why it's been credited with saving so many lives and why I think it's a great product. Swiping up from the bottom of the screen reveals Control Center. This icon at the top left is the ability to turn Wi-Fi on or off something you'll probably never need to do. This button to the right will help me locate my phone by playing a tone. So if you ever can't find your phone, just tap on this button to locate it. Another trick is if you press and hold on this icon, that will make the flashlight blink on and off as well. Here I can see my current battery level, and if I tap into that, I can access power reserve mode. This icon will silence all notifications, however, I will still receive haptic feedback. For me, when I use my Apple Watch on a daily basis, I almost always keep that turned on. This next icon is theater mode. When enabled, the screen of your Apple Watch will not light up when you raise your wrist and it will silence all alerts. The next icon is walkie talkie mode and specifically the ability to list yourself as available or not available. This moon icon represents do not disturb mode and if I long press into it, you will find all of the available focus modes, including sleep mode. This flashlight icon is for, you guessed it, a flashlight. Not something I use often, but there you go. Below that, we have airplane mode. This droplet icon represents water lock mode. It's a good idea to turn this on if you're about to take your Apple Watch into the pool, but if you forget, don't worry about it. It turns on automatically. When it's turned on, it will disable the touch controls on the screen and to turn it off, just rotate the digital crown. This will then play a loud tone in order to expel any water from the speakers. This icon allows you to change your audio output. So in my case, I can see my AirPod Pros as well as any other headphones. And finally, this icon is for headphone volume. The next feature I wanna show you is Notification Center. You can see all of your notifications by swiping down from the top of your watch. This will include notifications from apps, missed text messages, phone calls, etc. When it comes to customizing many of the different settings, as well as adding watch faces, you can do this process from your Apple Watch, or you can use the Apple Watch app on the iPhone. I find this process to be significantly easier to set up from the iPhone, plus that way I can record my screen, which makes it easier for you guys to follow along. 
One of the things that I mentioned earlier is that if you click the side button of your Apple Watch, that will get you access to the dock, which can be customized to contain apps that you use the most or apps that you've recently used. Personally, I always go with the option to set my own favorites. I'll start by tapping the edit button and I'm gonna remove any of these apps that I don't use. The apps that I like to keep in my dock include heart rate, blood oxygen, camera remote, and the ability to take an ECG. Let's now go into the settings for emergency SOS. I'd like to point out that the default setting for fall detection is based on your age. If you have a health condition, I strongly suggest that you turn this feature on. If you are the type of person who wants to have as few notifications as possible, one setting that you might want to disable is here in activity. Personally, I find this to be a bit annoying, so you might want to consider disabling it. Another feature that you might want to turn off is hand washing. Let's now go into the settings for heart health. One feature that I recommend that you make sure is turned on is detection for irregular rhythm. Also in this menu is the ability to make adjustments to what you consider to be a high and low heart rate. One of the things I use my Apple Watch for the most is the ability to respond quickly to text messages. One of the things you can do here in settings for messages is create several default replies. I use this feature more than anything just to let people know that I've received their message, but right now isn't a good time. I know a lot of people are into mindfulness, but again, if your goal is minimal interruptions, you might want to consider turning this feature off. Another feature I want to turn you on to is here in photos. I don't know about you, but I definitely do not need my photos syncing to my watch. My phone, yes. My watch, no. My advice is to turn this off. Let's now jump into the options for sleep. And before we continue, let me just say this. If you are interested in your Apple Watch tracking your sleep, there is a third party app that I think does a way better job compared to Apple's built in option. I'll cover that at the end of the video in the tips and tricks section. If that sounds like a feature you might like to use, just make sure sleep screen is turned on. There is one more setting that I want you to check out, and that one lives here in general settings. If we scroll down a little bit, here you'll find the option to enable screenshots. It doesn't come enabled by default anymore, but I want you to check it out to make sure you have it turned off. Who uses their Apple Watch to take screenshots? It's kind of crazy how many different watch face options there are these days. That being said, I want to show you two of my favorites. At the bottom of the watch app, I want you to tap on where it says face gallery. Here at the top, you'll find all of the latest new designs. These are constantly changing, so it's worth revisiting every so often. The one that I use the most, you'll find down here in infograph. I love this watch face because it's able to display the most information in one screen. One of the complications I always recommend having visible is the UV index, especially if you're light skinned or if you have a history of skin cancer. Another one that I always add is the air quality index, especially living here in Palm Springs. Right now that feature is not available, so let's swap out the left sub dial. Air quality is located at the bottom under weather, so let me tap on that and now that will always be visible. When you're done customizing the watch face, just tap on where it says add here at the top. Another one of my favorite watch faces is the Siri watch face. This will constantly change displaying different types of information including weather, things on your calendar, news headlines, and more. Before we go, I have five more Apple Watch related tips that I would like to share with you. It was really hard to nail this down to only five, but here goes. Tip number one, and this is a big one. If you have a parent or spouse who has a health condition, you can receive an automatic alert when their Apple Watch detects a problem. To set this up, go into the health app on their iPhone and tap on where it says sharing. Then tap on share with someone. Now locate your own contact card. I'm gonna set this part up manually. Here are some of the most helpful alerts like high heart rate, irregular rhythm, and low heart rate. If we continue to the next page, you'll find a massive list of all sorts of other data points. But I would argue that the most important one in this list is blood oxygen levels. Tip number two. For those of you out there who enjoy nature photography, one of the built-in apps that you might want to explore is the camera remote app. In our backyard, we get a ton of hummingbirds. 
but the second you take your iPhone out to try to shoot a video, they take off at 80 miles an hour. So what I tried doing was I put my iPhone into a simple tripod adapter, which I then attached to a lighting stand. Then I used the camera remote app to start and stop recording from afar. These were the results. Tip number three. One of the features that I use all the time is location-based reminders. How many times have you found yourself in a situation, whether you're driving or out and about, and you think to yourself, when I get home, I need to remember to do blank. Well, check this out. Just use Siri and say, when I get home, remind me to do blank. Provided you have your home address saved into your contact card, the second you walk through the door, your watch will deliver that reminder. Tip number four. If you do decide to buy the Apple Care Protection Plan and then one day need to get your watch repaired, don't go to the Apple Store. It is so much easier to manage the entire repair through the new Apple Support app. They send you a box, you send it to them, they send it back. Easy peasy. Last but not least, tip number five. You remember how earlier I said that I am not a fan of Apple's sleep tracking app, but there was a third party solution that I promised I would tell you guys about? Well, the name of that app is called AutoSleep. It's a one-time payment of $5. It does not track any personal information, and the app is extremely detailed, and when I put it side-by-side -side with the Apple Sleep app, the results speak for themselves. Two of the features that I love are how it presents you with a sleep score, and it also shows you whether you're operating on a sleep credit or deficit. Usually deficit in my case. It's not every day that a third-party app developer creates a better solution than the stock app created by Apple. And usually when that does happen, it doesn't take Apple long to acquire the company. So my question to you, Apple, is what is taking you so long? For the love of God, please acquire these people. For those of you who do choose to buy this app, I would be really curious to hear your thoughts and feedback. Let me know about it down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Be sure to take a quick moment to hit that like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.